So I, I guess that's the obvious early question. Uh, your, your injury, how did it, do you even remember how it happened? How did it happen? Oh, yeah. What did it feel like? It didn't feel good. Uh, <laughs> it, uh, so the third down, and, and uh, quite honestly, the only reason I was standing, I usually stand behind the offense. The only reason I was standing where I was standing was we got that penalty on the third down, which was not how that I've ever been told that was. So we like we worked that in fall camp, right? And we do it on purpose so that those guys can tell us, you cannot do this, you can't do this. So anyway, I was upset about, so I don't know, I don't understand the rule. Um, and that was third and 10, it goes to, or third and nine, it goes to third and four. So I've been standing right there arguing. And then uh, I see what they're doing uh, on third down. Um, they kind of rub us, get it complete, not a big deal. Um, but I thought I had it, I thought I had it braced <laughs> and the guy, Caden knocks the guy into my feet and I try to jump and I'm like, all right, I got it hurdled. Well, then he hits my feet and my head goes forward as his helmet, as he's running that way. And so, and I knew immediately, I'm like, yeah, that's, or right before it hit, I was like, this ain't going to be good. <laughs> and I knew right when it hit that it was, you know, you could feel the bleeding and, and, and it kind of stunned me for a second and um I was really just trying to trying to worry about the next play and um I think it was AJ. AJ got me sat down and um you know of course and then kind of a debacle there and a little bit of you know talk about sudden change. I don't think you're ever really expecting that one, you know. Um we handled, you know, like Penn State picks, fumbles, uh, we handled all that pretty well, but me getting knocked out I don't guess so well. So uh, how many you missed before you got back? I think, I think it was two. Missed two. I think it was two. Well, you got stitched up. Yeah. Well, I got stitched up at halftime. They had it glued oh, okay. <laughs> during the game. And uh, I went in and probably, you know, got after them pretty good and a little too much. So I popped all the glue off, started back bleeding, and they they stitched it up. So. All right, so on to the defense. Um, run defense, very good. Pass yep. defense obviously was an issue. So talk about both the good and the bad. <clears throat> so a run defense, I mean, we were 67 yards, 1.9 a carry. Um, I think we uh, uh, our P and 10 efficiency was like right at 80 percent. Um, you know, had some had some negative plays, some TFLs. I mean, the the, the pass coverage. I mean, look, here, here's the thing. Like, I, I'm not I'm like down on our guys. I don't feel any any different way about them. We're not executing very, very simple things. And I think a little bit of us trying to do too much. You know, a lot of times you go into a game like this and, you know, they think they, they got to have three picks, you know, and we and they, they get all these different things published about them, whether it's PFF grades or whatever it is. It's like do do what what your coach should do. Um, and it's simple fixes. It's, it's easy things, you know, it's whether it's playing the ball in the air, the depth width, execution of your drop. Um, it, it, so I'm not like, you know, it's game two. It's easy fixes. Like there's no, the sky's not falling. It's not panic time. You know, it's not. Um, you know, we ripped a bunch of guys, and so that that's you know, it's it's simple little bitty fixes, and we'll get it fixed. I mean, if, it's, if we're just gonna play two games and shut it down, you know, make my fall a little easier, but. <laughs> We got a lot of season left, and so we just we got we got to play better. We got to get better, play better, um, execute what we're trying to do, um, which was a very very limited in in that game. I said that after the game, and I wouldn't change it for anything. You know, I'm not going we're not going to go in and um, and reinvent the wheel. What we're trying to do in game two of the season. It's just not what we're going to do. And um, but we just got to execute well, just simple things better. Biggest issue with Reed. Reed. Oh, Biggest issue uh, with him, the, the running back, uh, yeah. short area quickness, <clears throat> the ability to jump cut and be full speed off the, we say the rail off the off the edge of the, the offense or the defense. Um, you know that's really hurt Cincinnati with some explosives, uh, getting him the ball. Um, but he is, he's a really really good player, hard to see, hard to find, um, can make, very very similar, Deuce Vonish. You know. Go back to uh, those days with Kansas State, and very similar. A little bit of that with Jaheim every day, a little bit, what he does. Yeah, very similar. Very, very similar type of back. It pits new offense 
uh, Coach Brown likened it to Texas Tech from a few years ago. Do you agree with that? And what stood out about their new offensive scheme? Yeah, I mean, it's very similar. It's hot, up tempo. Um, you know, it's it's uh, it, you, th those offenses. You know, they they rip what they do enough. I'm, I'm sure the players love it. It's easy for the players. Easy easy throws. Easy catches. Easy easy reads. Um, and it's just you know whether it's moving fast and they dink dink and then boom here you go or they just they come out firing at it right out of the gate um you know don't it doesn't require a lot um you know from the player you know from the from uh, motion shift you know kind of like penn state's a little different animal it doesn't require a lot of that from the player so um extremely simple they're good at what they do and they've done a good job of just being in it for now you know, whatever it is, seven months, eight months, um, and they're doing a good job with it. What's the biggest challenge defensively for you? It's guys? probably the tempo. It's the tempo, it's alignment, very simple, get your cleats in the ground and play football. Could you talk a little bit about the process of having Riley grow while playing and playing offense and having split time? And, you know, how, how, is that, uh, how, how, does, how does that work? Well, it's, when you have a guy that's naturally a, really, a good cover guy, um, you just really kind of have to bring him along within the, the menu of what you're asking him to do. And that's whether, you know, that's by call and by fundamental and by technique. And then you just kind of, you have a baseline, um, which is, is, again, he's a cover guy. He, he does a good job in man coverage. But, you, you know, you're not going to do that every time. So you have to just build his skill set as you go. But you can't put too much on him uh, at a time. So it's just, you know, it's just a slow process. It's understanding. Look, as as the weeks go, the depth of the defense and, and different things that he can do, and uh, you just got to work on it and get better at it. He seems to be growing now in, in that position. Yeah, he does. I mean, Rodney's a good football player, you know, and I, we, we've known that the whole time since his, his started his recruiting. Uh, a guy that's a multi-sport athlete in high school, and, and those, you know, those skill sets, just athletic, just just great athleticism is going to show up in everything you're trying to do. Um, what do you see from him um, statistically? He's been much better in the second half. I think five of his seven touchdown passes the second half. Is it just a, pr a product of processing things and, and learning as you oh, go? No, you can tell he, he understands the offense, understands where to and where not to go with the ball, can extend plays with his feet um, and and make, you know, with his feet, still turn around and get set and make some downfield throws. And so he, he, you can tell he has a really good understanding of what he's doing. What is the loss of uh, Eddie V? going to change do for you guys what impact does that have I mean it's we're built very similar across the front and what we're trying we're trying to do you know I mean um, TJ's had two two good for two first two good first games um, that and so we'll just we'll just keep rolling Jordan, how different is it with, with Holstein um, this is his third game last year you know Jerk Rich played like five years how, how different is it preparing for Inexperienced quarterback. Uh, I mean, it's it's a uh, <laughs> um, they're just two totally different. I don't, I don't ever. I really. I, I think from an experience standpoint, I think the only really big difference is when you have a true freshman. You know, like that's that's a that's the jump where you're like, okay, this may be a little different. When you have a guy that's been in a program he's been in and played ball, and and like I, I don't think that there's that. I don't see it as that much of an experience difference um they're just different they're different quarterbacks you know i mean jargovic was a big big arm guy and this guy is still a big guy but can extend plays with his feet and make still make throws downfield off of that and knows where to go with the ball or not to go with the ball and just two different different approaches i mean you just gotta you just work on alignment you gotta you just get aligned Again, get the call, whatever, if there's any adjustment in that formation, get it, get it communicated and get your cleats in the ground and play. Um, and there's not a, you can't do too much. Can't try to, try to, you know, overdo it with the, with the call sheet and trying to, um, you know, slow your kids down. You just got to, uh, alignment's the biggest thing. You just got to work on it. You know, we, um, our, our offense does it at practice. We get a good shot at it. You know, during spring and fall camp, you know, they do it quite a bit. So, um, you know, we, we get to work it and see it. Um, now you're not going to go out there for two hours and just 
tempo up and down the field, <laughs> you know. So it's just um, you show it to them. You know, you're watching the clocks and how the kind of the operation is, and you just very simply put it in practice and prepare for it. Given up, they've given up six sacks. Um, is it product of one-on-one -on -one blocks? Is it gains, stunts? What have, what have you seen that's allowed them to give up six sacks? Uh, I mean, I think uh, I think some of it they're looking at is coverage. You know, Cincinnati dropped a lot of um, a lot of people into coverage. I don't know as high as probably between 80 and 90 percent of the game. Um, so I don't, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, it's just depends on if you guess right and there's limited places to go, um, maybe a part of it, but um, haven't really gotten that far schematically into them yet. Jordan, go ahead. Jordan against tempo, the helmet communication help or hurt? Do you can you not use it against tempo, or does it help you use it? Uh, I mean, uh, again, I think that this experiment is a little bit of of uh, with the helmet communication just kind of figuring out through three games what you can and, and can't do and kind of how the operations differ from practice and everything that's going on. So I, the short answer is I don't know yet. Um, I think that there's a – I think you're seeing a little bit of it offensively and def defensively just watching TV that there's – I don't think people are utilizing it as much um, – as a, as like previously thought, just because of maybe tempo teams and and it's just not there's not it's not a viable investment to go into um, you know I mean it, it comes from the NFL let's let's keep in mind now both both groups huddle <laughs> you know come to the line snap the ball with under ten on the play clock and everybody's talking to each other and, and they're pros and they're pros for a reason and so that, you know these that's not college football. So you can get into a deal where you so then you're trying to give them too much. Um, we don't try to do that. It's just very simple communication things. Do you anticipate seeing more unbalanced? I think you've had it a little bit the last the first two games. Is that just a product of what they do or Penn State and Albany? Yeah, I think everybody, you know, it's a copycat sport, and I think everybody probably does a little bit, bit of it. And, it, you know, you're going to get – you get in teams that do it a lot. You're going to get different flavors every week. So – you very simply, again, it's unbalanced, and different sets, whether it's empties, formation into the boundary. You just very simply see what you see. You line up to it. You may have a little bit of foresight on some things Some things you may see, but you go too far down that rabbit hole, you're wasting practice time on what, what you really need to be getting good at. With rosters being so different and Pitt being different, how much can you take from a really solid defense performance on film last year and then the other end? Is there any advantage? having them play a, a Big 12 team last week versus like a program you're kind of familiar with versus if they played somebody else? I mean, it's, it's film, take film at face value. Um, and you see, I think, you know, especially in offense like this, I mean, they, they, they make that change and they want that identity and they bring that in and, that, and that's, that's who, they, who they are. Um, as far as, you know, seeing a team you're familiar with, they change defenses pretty much their whole staff too. So it's really not, you know, it's not something that they had a different offense last year. Cincinnati had a different defense. They since now they got a different. But now it's flip, and and it's so it's not a whole lot of stock. Jordan, one more thing about pass coverage. Um, I mean, you're not to the point where you're worried about changing personnel scheme, any of that. No, I think that I think the competitions that we talked about during fall camp um, are still competitions. You know those, and the you know especially in that in that corner room um, with uh, with Fagan and Crandall and Spells and getting those guys, and you see you see them, you know get a couple more reps, and um, you know you never know. I mean I and and everybody asked me going into it, it was pretty high on them. I still am, you know. But um, you, you you get into games where there's no scrimmages, and nothing's controlled, and right, and you're just not as far along on some things as you, as you wanted to be, and I understand that. But we'll get better, and those competitions stay open. They've been very fierce in fall camp, and they'll continue to be that way. Kids worried about you when you got cut? They look at you when you got home? Oh, my kids? Oh, yeah, yeah, they were scared to death. They, they, they come down to the – they were down on the field, which is way, way past their bedtime. <laughs> um, but they were happy until they, <laughs> until they saw me. And um, – 
you know, six, five, and four, or six, five, and two. They're not. What happened? Well, I can't really explain that. You don't really, you know. And the daddy got hit. Okay. Is there any advantage to of having a coach under you that's a co-DC that you're obviously that title makes you even more comfortable than just a regular assistant? Yeah, I mean, you have systems in place where you you don't miss a beat. You know, and I, like I said, that's not a sudden change you practice. Right. <laughs> you know, somebody getting knocked out on the sideline. So, yeah, and, and, uh, and I think I think Shadon's first reaction was, "What?" You know, like, "What? What happened?" And then uh, then you got to, you know, you just very simply call a play. Um, and I'm trying to get the headset back on. You know, and I'm asking like, "Where's the ball? Is the ball on the hash?" You know, and they're like, "Sit down. You can't." So anyway, it was, it was, um, you know, I probably. I probably got in the way as much as anything trying to get the headset back on, but um, I just knew we just had to get a get a call in, just get them lined up and get them playing. Um, but again, that's not something that anybody prepares for. Um, but yeah, you you just have you just have you just have systems in place. <clears throat> Something happens, next guy very similar to the players. Next guy get a play in, get them lined up, call. Is it the perfect play? Is it a good play? Who knows? Well, I mean, you you hope so, but I mean, it's it's uh, just get it in and and. Move on with the game. Do you ever have that or a fellow coach on a team you were at before happen before? Anything like that happened with you in your career? I don't, uh, no, I don't. Um, no, other than Buddy Stevens getting in a fight with an official <laughs> on last chance shoot. That's, that, that, you know, that's, I don't know that's for the world to see out there, but that was the only thing closest to it. Instead of wearing a helmet this week? Consider wearing a helmet this week. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, it's uh, you know, you look at it. It's I, I had a hat on, and again, I'm I, if I, my feet get if I'm not falling forward, I don't think I think I'm able to brace myself. Um, but I thought the hat, the brim would but would protect me a little bit. But the, you know, the the top of those face masks, the round piece, it, he just caught me flush. Bam, you know. So no, I, I don't I don't think I will, but. If it, if, I, if, it, if it happens again, then yes, absolutely. I guess bummer about Eddie, but are you excited to see what Redwood and Russell and guys like that can do kind of in expanded roles that haven't enjoyed before? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I think with, this, with both of those guys, I think that when you, again, it's, it's game three and you're getting in, you're starting to get in a rhythm, but you go back to the, to the Dukes Bowl, um, and those are two guys that really stood out uh, in that game. So, you know, excited about about what they bring, um, and um, you know we're a little different on some things than we were in that game as as, as new season. So they're, they're adjusting um, to new roles and maybe some playing playing multiple positions. So um, I'm excited to see them. You said you're kind of built similarly across the front, but the players are different as far as like skills and strengths. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Can you can you expect to see something different out of the positions or? what you may try to get out of them, even with just their strengths in there as opposed to, you know, Eddie being in there. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I think you always play, do things that play to the player's strengths. Um, now, you're not going to make, it's not like you're going to make any schematic wholesale changes because, you know, one person has a different skill set is down, but you're not, you may not ask them in certain things to do what that guy could do. So it's really not, you know, subtle changes, but it's not anything that's major, like a major overhaul. But, um, but I'm excited to see them. At Crossingsworth, you had a lot of players that played in, I don't want to say critical, but you know when the game was still being contested. Uh, a couple Spurs, uh, Nate Gabriel on the D-line, obviously corners, things like that. How much then does that carry into this week? What will that competition be like in determining who's out there first or most this Saturday? Yeah, I mean, you go back, you look at the film, and you see whether it's, whether it's things that are, have been improved or need to be improved, and then you carry over to practice, and then you make those calls throughout the week of the practice because the competition now carries into uh, the three days during the middle of the week that you that you practice, and you, um, you know, especially you know if you're doing some good on good stuff, which is is just the same as game light. So you get to see that and. Um, you know, that's just that's a part of what's probably what it's going to be with this with this group is there's a lot of competition. Some guys need more reps than others. But as those reps come, you evaluate them and you say, all right, well, now instead of these amount, now he's ready for this or he's ready for an expanded role in a, a substitution package. But we'll see. You mentioned the penalty 
before you got hurt. Um, did you get an explanation? Is Trey making a check call? Is that what it was? What, what, what was the explanation there? Let me see if I can do this within <laughs> how I'm supposed to. Uh, the way, the, the, if you look up the rule, the way it's explained to me is it's is, is, is termed as a simulated snap count, mm -hmm. which means moving toward the ball, barking at the ball. So LSU gets flagged for the same thing. And if you slow the film in, in the first game that I referenced before, if you slow the film down, the linebacker moves his head as he's, as he's doing that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I get it. I don't. There's not many snap counts anymore, and that are move. You know, set hut, set go, whatever. I, but so okay, I, I get it. I'm not. I'm not arguing that. But there's there's none of that in that, and so we do that in off season, and whether it's spring or fall camp, we do that with officials around, and so then we get feedback on whether what we're doing is not correctly done the way it's supposed to be done or whether it's it's uh or whether it's legal and and that's what that i was that i've been led to believe that we were otherwise we wouldn't do it if i know we're knowingly breaking a rule that we're gonna get penalized for i'm not gonna do it i'm not stupid but um that was not you know and the explanation was simulated snap count so if we clearly define what that is and if it's just simply saying the word move then I guess we're all good, you know. I mean, that's that's what we've been doing. We've been doing that as long as I've been coaching in this defense, and so that's. I guess I was misunderstood what the exact rule was, and, and so we'll correct it and move on. It's not a big deal. So that's the call, obviously, to tell the defensive line to shift if they're moving. Yeah, whatever, whatever it is. Yeah, I mean, that's right. that's an example. I right. mean, but. Is you, there a safe word? Are you asking, hey, what's the safe word we can yeah, say? Yeah, I mean, it's not it, it, be... it is, you know, what it is. Maybe that didn't sound like complaining. <laughs> okay, thanks, Coach. Yep, thank you all.